Welcome back. Bush and the Burrs with Paul Daffy for the boot that gives you that extra edge. And we heard a few North Melbourne players and many other players around the traps are wearing X blades and their numbers are increasing, in fact, across a range of sports. Daff, remember you were talking about accurate ruckmen as goal kickers? Mm-hmm. We got a good response. Simon Madden? Yes. Ottens was good, not to start off with. He was good no, at Geelong. I reckon he's a bit wayward at Richmond. Oh, he was wayward. Didn't, you know, there was one, he didn't like the one six metres out <laughs> between the goal post and the behind post. <laughs> Matt Primus was a shocker. Like... Now, now, I like, read that one about uh, Manson of Collingwood. Uh, James Manson at Collingwood, ugly as sin, accurate as hell. He was quite accurate. Yeah, yeah, he kicked a few bags in his time, too. Ben in Armadale said, even Mike Pike, last year he kicked 28-8. Which is a great return. He, he kicked 28 goals. Yeah. That's what small forwards are expected to kick. Yeah. He's, As a ruckman, that's good. He was a better proposition with Mumford in the team, though, wasn't yes. he? Yes. He's injured now, so hopefully he does come back. Well, Sadi Ghazi was pretty deadly around the sticks. Mm-hmm. And a very, very handy footballer. As you pointed out, he's been involved in local football, playing and coaching ever since he hung up the boots with Williamstown, and that now must span a couple of decades, including his playing days at Williamstown. Would that be right? Well, he won the Listen Trophy in 1989. Yeah. So that's a while ago. He won it on his own, too. There was a spate of multiple winners of the trophy around then. But he won it on his own in 1989. I think he played on for a little while longer. Yes, he did. So he's been in the game for a fair while. That's funny, because I just think of him as a young bloke. But (laughs) young, we'll call him young Sadi Ghazi, coach of Avondale Heights, joins us now. Good evening, Sadi. Good evening, guys. You're, prob- you're probably not the kid I remembered starring for Williamstown anymore, are you? Oh, I'm still pretty young, pretty young. But, uh, <laughs> um, 44 now, so not really young. Uh, you're a, you're a, a kid, just a whippersnapper. Sadi, Avondale Heights, and last hour I was actually speaking with Lech Featherstone, who comes from the Pasco Vale Football Club, and mentioned to him what a great grounding that was for his foray into the VFL. You play in a pretty tough competition, both in terms of toughness on the field and also quality of players, so nothing comes easy at the top level of the EDFL. Uh, look, no, it's, it's, it's a great competition, um, and I, you know, that was one thing that attracted me last year when um, there was an opportunity to coach Avondale Heights. Um, I guess as a coach, um, just wanted to challenge myself, and, um, you know, the competition goes pretty deep. Uh, it's 10 teams in the Premier Division, um, and, and most clubs, you know, you've got to turn up with the right attitude every week, um, otherwise you'll get beaten. So, you you know, you can't uh, pencil many wins in. Um, you know, last year, um, you know, Oak Park struggled a little bit um, and they got relegated. But other than that, um, it was a very even competition. So how long since Avondale Heights had won a premiership? Uh, What's well, quite interesting, though, it's a pretty easy answer because on Saturday... Um, the 2004 um, Premiership reunions on. So okay. um, that was in second division, um, but oh. that was their last Premiership they've won. So have they won a division? I remember in the 80s they were in grand finals. They have won one. They have won. I think they've won three Premierships. Uh, it's a 50-year-old club, or next year will be 50 years old. So mm-hmm. It's not an old club, but they have won um, one um, A-grade Premiership. Um now, I should know my history pretty well, but I, around 1987, something, yeah. something like that, that was an A-grade premiership. That sounds right. I think Adam Edwards is a coach. Um, now, I, uh, well, well, the point, I suppose, is it's been a long time. How have you got Avondale Heights up to a position where they're really in a good place to uh, vie for the premiership this year? Oh, well, it, well, it started last year you know, with my interest um, in coaching Avondale Heights, and, and I guess it goes back to um, you know a long time ago, from quite a few ex-Williamstown guys who went down there. Um, and one of them was, uh, you know, Simon Lloyd, um, who's the brother of Matthew and Brad, and, and Brad obviously played at Williamstown. Um, he he left around 1993 to go back with, with a couple of other guys, Steve Zamacool, Ash Koenig, uh, Steve Johansson. So there's a bit of history of, of ex-Williamstown guys going back to Avondale, and then Brad Lloyd went back there and um, sort of had of interest. And I, I knew a few guys over the years, and that was my interest. My interest was that I thought they had a really good nucleus. Uh, Chris Johnson had put in three years, and you now the club finished second last um, before last year, but won six games, and, and I thought they had a good nucleus of 10 or 12 players, and they were you know, recommitted for last year, and I thought, well, 
you know, we could pick up a few players. Um, you know, the timing of Paddy Rose coming back from, from the bush, um, Matty Cravino and a couple of others uh, ready to leave the alignment at Williamstown. Um, you know, and pick it, picked up those six or seven blokes and, and we're good enough to make the finals last year. But, you know, we knew this year we, we need to, you know, pick up another four to six to, to match the Greenvales and the, uh, the Aberfeldies. And it's interesting, given your background in the VFL, not surprising, and this was something that started obviously before you took over the reins, but whereas a lot of clubs look to the AFL, immediately retired footballers, to try and bolster their on-field stocks, that can be expensive and it can also be very flighty. It appears as though you've really lent on some of the best players in the VFL and to get the, the moving art gallery, Dean Galea, down there is an absolute coup. He was still playing great football and he just he, he casts a mighty shadow, doesn't he, the big boy? Uh, look, we're actually making a comment tonight at training. Um, you know, afterwards when we're having a meal, I've, I've never seen hands and feet like he has. <laughs> just, he's got big hands and big feet. But look, I, I think it's a credit to those guys. Um, you know, some you know, Paddy Rose really had a lot of influence in getting Dean Galea across, um, and 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 off coach Dean and off coach Matty Cravano and Paddy Rose. Look, um, I, I think El, it's really important now, even at local level, that you know you've got to recruit good people. Um, number one, and then obviously they've got to be good footballers. But you know, it's just it's it's tough um, because you know local clubs, you know, committees, you know, led by our president Milton Harris and and his committee, you know, they work tirelessly. You know, they we're not a, a rich club. Uh, we work hard for it. Um, and I think having the success we've had with Paddy Rose kicking 100 goals last year has really brought a lot of people back to the footy club. And, you know, what we're trying to do is embrace, obviously, the future. But the one thing that I'm really... And you learn as you get older, and that is we really wanted to make sure our past players and, and supporters, really, we embrace them as well. Um, it's really important because, you know, we need them. And, um, and I think having, you know, probably six or eight of those blokes play footy together before has been easy to get them across. So this strikes me as a measure of your, your improvement this year. Last year you played in the first semi-final at Airport West beat you by 48 points. Last Saturday you played Airport West again and you've defeated them by five points. Now the most impressive thing there is you've kicked six, three in the last quarter and, and held Airport West scoreless. So it does seem to indicate that you... I know Airport West were pretty keen to uh, have a crack at the premiership themselves this year. So it indicates you've, you've taken a step forward. Um, I think so. I think we have. I mean, we beat them twice last year, but they beat us really easily in the final as well. Our worst performance last year was the final. Um, okay. Well, and, how'd you do um, on a Saturday then? How'd you do on a Saturday? Um, look, I think, look, one thing we've been able to do is we, our bottom six in our 22 this year are a lot better. There's no doubt our depth, you know, in the 22. We're very evenly spread, I think. Um, we're getting even 22 contributors. Um, look, you know, we had a bit of luck at the end. You always get a bit of luck if you're going to win from 39 points down. But, you know, one thing we, we always say, and, you know, game of footy doesn't always, you know, go perfect. So we just persevere and stay in there. Um, look, but I think, you know, this year when we got our first four games, you know, Marby away was always going to be tough. You know, your first game, no matter who you play, is going to be tough. But then we had, you know, Greenvale Abbas who beat us twice each last year. Um, and Airport West, where we, you know, it was two and one. So our first four games, we thought if we... You know, it can be two and two, or three and one, but to be four and zip is obviously, you know, it, there is improvement there, there's no doubt. But it's a long way to go as well. We've got to remember that. Now, I need to tread a little carefully here. Saadi, um, I know you're of Middle Eastern extraction. Are you Muslim? No, I'm, I'm well, my mum's Catholic and my dad's Orthodox, yep. so yep. Lebanese background. Sure. So, um, but, um, is, that, yeah. is that Coptic, the, the, the Orthodox, Lebanese? Is that, it was, it's very similar to the Greek Orthodox. Yeah, yeah. So it was good this year because we didn't have to celebrate two Easter's. So it was all on the same <laughs> same weekend this year. Um, look, you know, I've, I've been brought up in, in multicultural um, environment. I've got a lot of a lot of my close friends are Muslim, Lebanese. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I think this week we play Northern Saints, and it'll be it'll be you know I hope we win number one, but it'll be interesting to see the talent because I know they've got a lot of Lebanese and and Turkish background players. So there's some elite, you know, players from that background. But I mean, no, as that's, we know that's now... It, that's exactly why I'm asking, because we note that um, West Coburg, who yeah. are an Essendon District Football League team, they now have um, their Barbie on Thursday night's halal. <laughs> and, they've, you know, and, and you just look through the list of players, and it's fantastic how 
it's easy to say it. Look, we, we can throw out all the epithets in the world about multicultural football, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, but when it actually takes hold and produces for football clubs in the in the region, in your case, the yes, Essendon District Football League, great players and a supply of players, it means that these suburbs that we had as traditional footy hotbeds probably went into recess for about a decade or so and are now regenerating with equally as good footballers, just with harder to pronounce surnames. Uh, no doubt, no doubt. And uh, look at you look at Avondale even um, you know, there's there's not many Lebanese there, but there's just a lot of Italians and, you know, some Greeks and, and, and obviously Australians and, you know, we have actually a function mid year normally where they cook up all the uh, different meats, etc. But look, you know, obviously we're all Australians. Uh, we live in Australia. It's a great country. And, you know, to be able to play, you know, uh, football, Aussie rules, whatever you want to call it, um, you know, it, it doesn't matter, obviously, what nationality you are. It's it's the effort you put in and the time. And, um, you know, um, the one thing is there is some talent. It doesn't matter. You know, and I know they play now the, um, you know, there's a carnival. They play with different nationalities and, I know there's one Lebanese team, and but you know at the end of the day, I suppose it doesn't you know discriminate now. The game, you know, whoever wants to play can play, and that's a great thing. And if they're playing well for Avondale Heights, it's a great thing for the coach as they have done thus far this season. Sadi, congratulations! There's a lot of work ahead because, as we pointed out, not only at the top end, right through the top grade of the EDFL, there's no givens and. If you can maintain the form, maybe we'll have a chat around finals time about the premiership prospects. No worries, guys. Thanks for having me tonight. Thanks, Sadie. Thanks for being had. No, he wasn't. <laughs> it's a little gag. Yes, Steph. <laughs> I was just going to say, I spoke to David Glary from West Coburg, the president from West Coburg during the week, and I thought, what a great indication of a multicultural club that they serve halal meat in the club rooms on Thursday nights. So when you, you do get their best last, well, the, the two main goal kickers were Fawood and Fawaz Akari, two, two each. The best included Marwan Abdul Wahid, uh, Omar Saad, the Ruckman, and, but also other nationalities. The best player was Debrie Cotrolli, Ruckman Pashi Swelga, and the coach Digby Morell. That's not a very inter- international name, but it probably is. Digby Morell well, sounds Digby? terribly English. It does actually, doesn't it? it sounds oh, like say, that's Digby Morell over there. Why? He needs another surname tacked on with a hyphen, doesn't he? Why didn't I go to? I, I went to Egypt with Digby's father, Digby <laughs> Senior. Oh. <laughs>